Hi, Martin Turner here. This week we have our third lecture on understanding the past. We will review key concepts we have learned in weeks one to six. We review what our firm does and its strategy. We also review the economic profit framework and the key accounting drivers of return on equity and return on net operating assets. We also see the videos available on Moodle that provide key content for our unit. First, we start with a review of what each of our firms does. Hi, Martin Turner here, and welcome to the week six lecture for Act 13017, Financial Statement Analysis. And this week we're looking at understanding the past. Well, first of all, we're going to review week five. Then we're going to further analyze return on equity. We're going to be looking at efficiency, and then we're going to revisit leverage. And then we'll have the minute paper. We saw last week, in terms of understanding the past, we saw that the, we can break the financial statements down into accounting drivers. The accounting drivers that are driving the financial statements. And we looked at analysing return on equity. Analysing means breaking things into bits. And we broke return on equity into three bits, leverage, profitability and efficiency. And last week we looked at leverage and profitability, two of the three drivers of return on equity. We have the accounting drivers are driving the financial statements. And we saw that also we can have the economic and the drivers of the economic and business realities of our firm. And a key to, is to understand the connections between the key accounting drivers of our financial statements and the key drivers of the economic and business realities of our firm. It is understanding these connections that's central to financial statement analysis and also to accounting and to being able to give advice. We saw that the we can't just go from the past financial statements to predict the future financial statements. It would be great if we could, but life is just not that simple. We saw that last week that we've got and that we've got to connect to the economic and business realities of our firms. For example, Roman Healthcare, one of its economic and business realities is residential house prices. And then we need to forecast these economic and business realities and then connect them back to, the, to our forecast of our future financial statements. Now, in terms of the accounting drivers of the financial statements, we looked at abnormal earnings as a key accounting driver. And we said that we'll be soon switching our focus to abnormal operating income rather than abnormal earnings as we will be focusing on the operating activities to come up with the enterprise value of our firms. And abnormal earnings and abnormal operating income are accounting measures of value add to equity investors. And we saw that we can break down abnormal earnings into return on equity, cost of equity capital, all times book value of equity. And then we focused on return on equity. And then we're able to further break down return on equity into three drivers, leverage, leverage, profitability, and efficiency. And today we're going to be focusing on efficiency. Efficiency is how well we're using our net operating assets to generate sales. Asset turnover, turnover is another word for sales. So asset turnover is the relationship between assets and sales. Asset turnover equals sales divided by net operating assets. In other words, how much sales can we generate in our business for each dollar of net operating assets we have invested in the business? We can also flip that over to the inverse, one over asset turnover, which is net operating assets divided by sales, which is how much net operating assets we need to invest in our business for each dollar of sales. So this is the concept of efficiency. 
Now, efficiency is important because return on net operating assets is driven by profit margin and asset turnover. It's driven by the interaction of both profit margins and asset turnover. So we need to focus not just on profit margins, but also on efficiency, on asset turnover. How efficient can we generate sales from the net operating assets we have invested in the business? So for Ryman Healthcare, it's asset turnover equals sales divided by net operating assets which equals $872.6 million divided by half its closing and opening net operating assets. I've been using average net operating assets for Roman Healthcare because it's such a strongly grown company. And if you calculate that through, you get 0.19 times. So its asset turnover is 0.19 times. So it's quite low, but it has a high profit margin. And for most businesses, there's often a relationship between asset turnover and profit margin, an inverse relationship. For example, this graph here shows uh, a range of profit margins and asset turnovers that together can generate a return of, of 10%. And uh, so you can see as the asset turnover gets lower, the profit margin gets higher. And as the asset turnover gets higher, profit margin gets lower. So they're all 10% on that line. So there can be that interrelationship between profit margin and asset turnover, that inverse relationship for many businesses. So efficiency is an important aspect to look at and an important aspect of our return on equity or our return on net operating assets as we focus on operating activity for firm. Now, having looked now at uh, leverage, profitability and efficiency as drivers of return on equity, we just, we're going to revisit leverage now that we've looked at the issue of efficiency. Return on equity can be broken down into return on net operating assets plus FLEV, financial leverage, times spread, where spread equals return on net operating assets minus net borrowing cost. Now, return on net operating assets equals operating income divided by net operating assets, and net borrowing cost equals net financial expenses divided by net financial obligations. So you can see the difference between return on equity and return on net operating assets is, is plus FLEV time spread. It's not just the financial leverage, but also the relationship between financial leverage and spread, which is the difference between the return on net operating assets we can generate minus the net borrowing cost. Now, for Ryman Healthcare, the spread is return on net operating assets minus net borrowing costs, which equals 14.2% minus 0.4%, which equals 13.8%. So Roman Healthcare has quite a big spread, 13.8%. Now, when we add it in, its financial leverage is 0.784. So the return on equity equals return on net operating assets plus financial leverage times spread which equals 14.2% plus 0.784 times 13.8%, which equals 14.2% plus 10.7%, which equals 24.9% return on equity. So you can see that leverage between the return on net operating assets of 14.2% and the return on equity of 24.9%, which is 10.7%, is a combination, not just of financial leverage, 0.784, but also of the spread. So Ryman Healthcare gets quite a lot of leverage, quite a lot of leverage of its return on net operating assets to return on equity, quite a lot of increase for each dollar of leverage it puts in because it's got a high level of spread. So you can see financial leverage, 0.784, flows through to the 10.7% and the 
but that interaction would spread. Now, we've seen before that we can break up return on equity into return on operating assets plus return on net operating assets minus return on operating assets plus the return on equity minus return on net operating assets. So return on equity equals the return on operating assets, the op what the operating assets of the business generates, plus the difference between return on net operating assets and return on operating assets, and then the difference between return on equity and return on net operating assets. For Roman Healthcare, we can put those numbers through 10%, 10.0% plus 14.2% minus 10.0% plus 24.9% minus 14.2%, which equals 10.0% plus 4.2% plus 10.7%, which equals 24.9%. So we can see that the operating leverage is the difference between return on net operating assets and return on operating assets. The leverage we get from our operating liabilities. And you can see for Ryman Healthcare, that's 4.2%. And then we've got the financial leverage, which is the return on equity minus the return on net operating assets, which in Ryan Healthcare's case is 10.7%. So the difference between the return on the operating assets of 10.0% that Ryan Healthcare is generating on the operating assets in the business, the leverage it gets to get it up to 24.9% return on equity is both financial leverage, 10.7%, and operating leverage, 4.2%. So we can break the leverage down into operating leverage and financial leverage. And you can see that as we begin to focus on the operating activities of the firm, we'll be ignoring the financial leverage, but there'll still be the operating leverage that'll be uh, lifting up our return on net operating assets. Now we're now at week six in our unit, we're halfway through. We've been laying the foundation, the sort of conceptual foundation for what we'll be doing in the second half of the unit as we analyze and value our firms. So in weeks one to six, we've, what you will have done is you'll have identified what your firm does. It's very important that you spend some time on this. Some people do a great job on this and they've got a good grip on what their firm does and doesn't do. But other people are sort of, oh, well, you know, they've got a bit of a vague idea, but they haven't really got into it. If that's you, you need to go back and really identify what your firm does, understand its business, understand where it's operating, how many staff it's got, whether it makes things, sells things, what does it do? And Roman Healthcare, for example, does not sell retirement village units. It simply sells the, the occupancy rights to them, which is like a lifelong lease. It still owns all these, these um, retirement village units. So it's really understanding what your firm does. And the other thing that we did was we discerned its strategy. Again, some people have really come to grips with their firm strategy quite a bit. But other people uh, cut a few corners and haven't quite really got it. So you need to understand what its strategy is. Ryman Healthcare is focused on uh, building and developing and managing retirement villages, both in New Zealand and in Australia, in Melbourne and surrounding areas in Victoria. And it doesn't sell them, it holds on to them. So it's getting this big portfolio of properties, retirement villages, and that it's growing strongly each year in those two areas. And uh, so you could, and it doesn't, it's not going to do anything else. It's not going to build anything other than retirement villages. That's all it does. So it's understanding your firm's strategy. You've read the annual report of your firm. So you, that gives you a lot of information. You can look at other information. People have been looking at various videos and news articles and so on to discern what our firm does, what it is, what its strategy is. That's an important foundation. We need to have engaged with the real business of our firm because we're going to be using the accounts and the key accounting drivers to connect through to the key economic and business drivers of our firm. And how are we going to be able to do that if we don't even know what our firm does, what its markets are like, 
how it's operating, what its strategy is going forward. What is it likely to be doing in the future? So th that's what we've been doing in these early weeks. If you've been, if you're a little bit loose on some of that, you need to strengthen that now and be just getting a good grip, if better grip on your firm. If you've got a good grip on your firm, you've got a good foundation for what we'll be doing going forward. We also had a look at the at what value is in a business. And we saw that the uh, we can view the value of equity as the book value of equity plus the present value of abnormal earnings. This is the economic profit framework. And we've seen, we've mentioned that we're going to be replacing abnormal earnings with abnormal operating income as we focus just on the operations. We're going to be focusing on the operating activities of our firm. We're going to be coming up with an enterprise value of our firm. And so that's the value of the firm as a whole, but not considering, but ignoring the financial activities. So it's the operating activities as a whole, not of the company. The value of equity is the book value, opening book value of equity, plus the present value of abnormal operating income. That's what we're going to be focusing on. We also saw that to restate the financial statements, make sure we've clearly separated the operating and financial activities. The financial statements don't completely separate the operating and financial activities, so we need to do that first. That's a, a task that experienced analysts take you know, a minute or two to do for their firm and they separate them out. The financial statements, some people ask me, well, Martin, how come they don't just separate it out to start with if it's so important? Well, financial statements over, particularly over the last 10 years or so, have got better and better at separating out the operating and financial activities. So there is quite a trend to that. Certainly a lot of analysts would like that, saves them doing it. And, uh, and it is a very powerful way of looking at a firm to clearly see the different, the, the separate operating and financial activities of the firm and how they're interacting. So you've restated the financial statements of your firm. And we've had a look at Raman Healthcare, my firm. We've all got our own firm. And we've seen that abnormal earnings is the return on equity. We, we've seen that an, analysing the financial statements means breaking it down into bits. We saw that the value of equity is the book value of equity and the present value of abnormal earnings. Then we've broken down abnormal earnings into return on equity minus the cost of equity capital, row E minus one, all times the book value of equity. This is our economic profit framework, which we're breaking down further the abnormal earnings. And when we shift to abnormal operating income, which we're going to be doing soon, we're going to be focusing on return on, we're going to be able to then break abnormal operating income into return on net operating assets minus the weighted average cost of capital, all times net operating assets. Weighted average cost of capital is the cost of capital for the operations of the firm. Abnormal operating income equals return on net operating assets minus weighted average cost of capital all times net operating assets. This is where we're heading with our analysis based on the economic profit framework. And then we can break down the return on net operating assets into profit margin times asset turnover, which equals Profit margin equals operating income divided by sales times asset turnover, which equals sales divided by net operating assets. And so you can see that if we, if we, if the sales are cut out in the top and the bottom, we get operating income divided by net operating assets, which is return on net operating assets. So we can break down that ratio return on net operating assets, assets into two ratios, profit margin and asset turnover. We saw with Grime and Healthcare, its profit margin is a whopping 74.2%. We times that by a low um, asset turnover of 0.19 to get 14.2% return on net operating assets. So we've seen in these first six weeks that the focus of financial statement analysis is on connecting the past financial statements to the economic and business realities of the firm in the past. And there's a video, this is a live link on the slides, and you can see them in the, on the video 
find it in the video section on the right of Moodle or on the bottom of Moodle if you're on a tablet or phone. Connect to reality. So that helps you to discuss a short video discussing that key focus of shifting from the financial statements to the economic and business realities of the past. Some people are already starting to do that. And, uh, and some people just find they naturally find themselves doing it. Particularly if you've got a good grip on what your firm does, you understand its strategy, you've had a good look at its annual report and other information. You can just find yourself just curiously doing that. Other people find it really difficult. They go, well, why? How do you, you know, how do you do this? It's all too vague. You know, how do you get from the financial statements to the economic and business realities? Invariably, I find people who find this hard haven't put the time into really understanding their firm. What does it do? What products and services does it provide? Does it make anything? Does it sell things? What does it actually do? Where's its staff? Where's its activities? And, uh, you know, and engage with the, there's a lot of information about each of our firms. So we saw that this is a focus of financial statement analysis, connecting to reality. For Ryman Healthcare, we saw that its um, key economic and business drivers are the growth in residential property values, struck which, which affects what it can sell its retirement village occupancy rights for, growth in residential property values, the strong demand for retirement village units. There's been ongoing strong demand for a long time now. Um, is that going to continue? Strong demand for retirement village units as uh, more and more people are, are opting for this as they get older. Capacity to develop and manage retirement village units. It's turnover existing village units about seven years. That's growing slightly. It's getting sort of a little bit over seven now, seven and a bit. But the turnover existing village units about seven years, so that's how long people on average are staying in their village, retirement village units and the occupancy levels of their retirement village units. So these are, these are what I'm referring to as the key economic business drivers of Roman healthcare. And it's understanding and predicting these key economic and business drivers of our firm. They'll be different for every firm. It's understanding these, and then we've got to predict them. <laughs> it can be not so easy to predict. Like Ryman Healthcare is one of them is, uh, is residential house prices, not so easy to predict. Some other things can be a little bit easier to predict. That's at the heart of financial statement analysis. So what was the most important thing you learned today? And what questions remain unanswered? Najla, is how well we can use net operating assets to generate sales. Also profit margin asset turner has inverse relationships. So what was the most important thing you learned today is uh, our, is that efficiency is how well we can use net operating assets to generate sales. That's right. It, in the private equity days, we would be, when we're looking at potential businesses to buy, some of the things we look for are some net operating assets that aren't really needed to generate the sales that could be removed. You might have a factory and have a, 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 an empty piece of land next to it, uh, which may not really be needed. It may not really be any need to expand into it in the next five or 10 years. So we've got some operating assets not generating sales. There can be some um, inventory that's really not any use in the back of the inventory, sort of got old and wasted and stuff. It's not really doing anything. And so we need to get rid of that, either write it off or sell it in some way to, to move it on. And so we... It's how well can we use net operating assets to generate sales? That can be a little bit neglected in some businesses. People are focusing on profit margins, how much you know, money they make for each dollar of sales, how much profit. But also important is how well we're using our net operating assets to generate sales. There might be ways of improving that relationship. And also, Naj was saying the other thing that most important things you learned today was that profit margin asset turnover, they usually, for most businesses, have an inverse relationship. The higher that you'll see this with most people's firms, the higher the profit margin, like Ryman Healthcare has a really high profit margin, but it has a really low um, asset turnover and vice versa for firms that might have low profit margins, they might have very high asset turnover. So there tends to be a bit of an inverse relationship. So they're good things to have picked up.
analyzing return on equity. What have we done today? We've analyzed return on equity, breaking things down into bit. Last week, we broke return on equity into leverage and profitability. This week, we looked at efficiency and then revisited leverage as we're breaking return on equity uh, into bits. And we're seeing how we're going to be focusing on return on net operating assets as we start to focus on the operations rather than the company as a whole. Well, thank you very much, everyone. And uh, I look forward to continuing to work with you in the coming week. So bye for now.